In this video, we're going to look at the origins of the Electoral College. When creating the Constitution, there were a couple competing ideas for an Electoral College. The first was to have Congress elect the President. And that was good in the sense that the Founders wanted an indirect method of electing the President. They didn't want the people to vote for President directly. So having Congress do it was a good idea. However, they also wanted a separation of powers. They didn't really want the president to be beholden to Congress. So what they ended up doing was creating a body numerically just like Congress. That was called the Electoral College. Now this was after a lot of negotiation trying to figure out the representation formula in Congress, which was from the Connecticut Compromise. Rather than start again, they simply took that template, they took that formula and opted to create a new body every four years that was identical, numerically identical to Congress, called the Electoral College. Now, in practice, that works out to more of a point system, but at the time, it was a body of people constituted every four years to elect the president. Now, at the start, this wasn't really a big deal. You know, it worked pretty effectively because George Washington was elected twice by consensus. So the college didn't really present any problems. It worked as it was supposed to until 1796. If we consider the mechanics of the electoral college, so within that body of voters, each elector would get two votes. And that's the system called approval voting. Basically, you're picking two people that you would be okay with being president. And they would tally all those votes the person who got the most votes would be the president. The second place person would be the vice president. However, in this election, 1796, the first and second place candidates were from different parties. John Adams, the Federalist candidate, was elected president. Thomas Jefferson, his opponent, was elected vice president. And so if we can try and imagine that in the present day, you, you wonder if anything's really going to get done with a president and vice president from opposing parties not really going to work that effectively. So this was a problem again the following election in 1800. Here we have two people tied, Jefferson and Burr. However, Burr, Aaron Burr, was Thomas Jefferson's vice president. So the two people that were running on the same ticket, the Thomas Jefferson and his vice presidential candidate Burr finished tied for first. So that was essentially a tie for president. What do you do now? Well, the House of Representatives had to pick the winner. That was, if, if there was no clear winner at the Electoral College, then the candidates had to go to the House of Representatives for a vote. Now, after 36 rounds of voting, Thomas Jefferson was eventually the winner. Now, why did this cause so many problems? Well, you look at the Federalist side here, we can see that with Adams and his vice presidential candidate, Pinckney, the Federalist electors agreed to have one of their people throw away a vote for Pinckney to ensure that there would not be a tie. They wanted Adams to win and Pinckney to come in second, so they convinced one of their electors to vote for John Jay. That way they would avoid a tie. The Federalists were thinking about this, the Democratic Republicans were not, and they ended up with their top two choices tied. Now the reason it took so long is because Nobody, none of the electors wanted to be the ones to throw away their vote for Burr because if too many of them did that, then you could see John Adams actually take, take the lead um, with the Federalist electors. So this was a complicated process. Eventually they figured out how to do it and Thomas Jefferson was declared the president. But after this they realized that the Electoral College as constituted was not going to work. So. A amendment was passed, the 12th Amendment, that changed slightly how the Electoral College would vote. Each party would rather run a ticket of two candidates, a president and a vice president separately. And so that way you wouldn't have to worry about the, the president and the vice president finishing first and second. This, after the 14th Amendment, after the addition of new states, we now come to recognize the modern Electoral College. Essentially, each state has a point value, and that point value is, uh, is considered equal to their electoral college votes. 
Now, originally, the Electoral College, how does that calculate? Well, you got two votes for each state. That was to reflect two senators. Plus, you got one vote for each member of the House of Representatives. So the original Electoral College had 60, 69 total votes. Currently, we get 538. And what does that come? Well, that's two for each senators in each state, plus 435 members of the House of Representatives, plus three for the District of Columbia. So that gets 538. That's where the Electoral College is today. Three is the minimum. So if you're a state like Wyoming or South Dakota, you'll get two Electoral College votes for your senators and one for your congressman. California, for example, same thing. You get two senators plus your electoral, uh, your your House of Representatives congressional delegation. So that's where the math comes from. 538 electoral college votes. In order to win, you need to be the candidate that gets 270 electoral college votes.